It's been a while. Uh, not to make a Nickelback reference or whatever band it is. Okay, we're going to start over. Hello. It's been a long winter. It's finally May here in Minnesota. It may be a cold, rainy day, but it is starting to warm up. And over the winter, I've been busy. Last year, we finished this catapult. It's big and in the way of a lot of things, but I am done with it. Um, I also built a ballista, as you can see here. A nice little handheld crossbow type deal. Very easy to maneuver. <clears throat> Videos of me shooting it here and here. I didn't record me building it much because it was too cold and I could only do like 30 to 40 minute bursts of building before my hands would freeze. So I took a few things from what I learned on the catapult and apply them to the ballista. So one of the main problems of the catapult was where the torsion bars would twist, they would dig into the wood. And we can insert footage of the wood, yeah. So I metal plated with some aluminum where the torsion bars would spin. Now that was a great improvement, one of the best ones. Um, this ballista kind of works like a crossbow where you pull the string back onto this trigger here and it's just a simple one piece trigger with a spring on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to show but you can just pull it and it lowers down. So you hook the string on here and then pull this down, release the string. Uh, this ballista had a few problems. One of them be, being I didn't space my build very well so I had to fill these gaps with chunks of wood. I also didn't plan on how I was going to adhere this torsion box to the body, so I kind of just drove some screws in it. You can see them sticking through there. Also, since this is my first time, I used the cheap Menards lumber. That always works perfectly. You can see cracks. And we weren't even getting that much torsion out of these bars here. We were twisting them pretty good, but it was still only by hand really. And we weren't at the limits of the strings or anything, but we were at the limits of this wood cracking here. So with those lessons learned, I tried using a lot less screws. I also wanted to make it more of an authentic ballista. What is he talking about? Another ballista? There's no way. Come with me. It's a nice wall hanger, but this is what I am talking about today. Pretty fancy, huh? I am the siege weapons guy, and this is my weapon. It fires exactly one bolt every about 20-30 seconds. Each bolt costs about $3 and can be reused. It is built out of some cheap lumber from Menards, as I am still learning this process and didn't want to invest too much money in it. I would like to talk about some of the improvements on this ballista versus my last ballista. We're going to start out the front of the weapon, but I'm just going to take it off its stand real quick. So it's got this nice little leg, so while you're messing around loading it, you can keep it propped up, but if you just lift up a little, it falls out and rotates freely. So starting with the most important So starting with the most important part of the ballista, the torsion box. I made it out of wood. That's a lot stronger than 2x4s, or 2x8s is what I used before, but either way, it's still pine. But it's a quality board. I also used a lot less screws, basically no screws. Used wooden dowels and a lot of wood glue to join the wood together to not compromise the structural integrity using screws. I also put on this sheet metal here, which will be a lot better than the aluminum I used on the old ballista. Um, using the same pipe system, where we're going to put rebar in it, twist them up, 
We're going to strap this down to a table so we can get it good and secure, lots of power out of the strings. Also, a thing I learned from watching Todd's workshop is these strings in here are pre-taut. They've already got force on them without being twisted up. Because if you put in loose strings, you're losing a lot of power. Because some of the strings will get tight quickly, some of them won't. It uh, was a lot more difficult to get the strings in the torsion box, but should make a big difference in power. Also, you can see this thing is stanced out. Built this little tripod using this universal bolt. Stole the idea from ZNA Productions. Uh, it's honestly a genius idea. Really easy to do. It's cheap. Works well. You can actually aim this thing. That's crazy. So, this is my trigger I made. This is the first time I've tried welding, so go easy on me. Bought a little cheap welder. It's pretty cool that the Siege Captain has started welding. It's a little cheap stick welder. First time welding in 10 years since high school. It's not pretty, but it is functional, hopefully. So it's a pretty simple process. This little piece slides in and out. Uh, when it's not underneath it, this can hinge up. You'd latch your bowstring in. This goes underneath. Now it can't open. Bowstring's locked in place. You pull the drawstring, releasing this part. Now the string can go forward and shoot the arrow. This is attached to the slider. Uh, I gotta deactivate the winch. Pull out some rope quick. I'm just gonna, and then when you do that, this whole part slides. This whole part slides forward. This slides all the way up to the drawstring. Put it underneath here. Lock this in place. Now the string can't come out. You reactivate the winch. Begin cranking. Now there's barely any force on those strings up there, so it's not looking very impressive right now, but it will. And then when you want to loose the shot, you simply pull the string, releasing the drawstring. Now, believe it or not, that was my first time testing it, and it seems to work perfectly. I cannot believe it. Arrows. We got two of them. The first arrow is made out of an oak dowel. Got the duct tape fletchings. Don't know where I got that idea from, but I have seen it somewhere. Um, the tip, as you can see, the little screw. I screwed it in. I drilled a hole, screwed it in, sanded it off the top into a little point. Uh, probably not going to get much penetration from it, but should be interesting. Second arrow, I'm a little more excited for. I took a hollow aluminum rod, put a little hex nut in it with a little hole in it, put a nail through it, hammered that down kind of like a rivet, then took a threaded rod, threaded that down, and then sharpened the tip and put a little weld on it to hold it in place. I dented the tip because I dropped the arrow, but still pretty sharp. Same duct tape fletching. This arrow feels a lot heavier, but the point of balance is still pretty center. Like right about there. I would like to weigh these arrows quick. So we're gonna do ounces, because we're American, and grams, because it's a better measurement. Exactly four ounces, 114 grams on the wooden one. The metal one, what a chonker, 6.7 ounces, 189 grams. Uh, weighing them is kind of irrelevant because I won't be able to calculate energy because we don't have a way to measure the speed that they're traveling at. I don't have a chronograph, I'm sorry.
Freaking Christ, bro. Who built this thing? Okay, I'm gonna twist this one more. And then we'll lift it up and... I'm scared for my life. Okay. I hope those strings don't slip off. What happened? Is it untwisting? Ballista is merely settling. You know, in Todd's workshop, he was talking about how he was scared doing this thing. I see. I understand. Genuinely concerned for my safety. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> she taught. Okay, we got some force on it. I can't bend them by hand. Kind of, con I can't even bend these arms back by hand. Kind of concerning, because I don't know how much force this thing can actually take. All right. Our target for today is going to be this piece of plywood with some homemade chain mail. See if the arrow will go through. First arrow we're gonna shoot is this, the wood one, but we gotta get it cranked back. <clears throat> um, should I get some like safety glasses? You know it's scary when the siege captain's actually putting on protection. And my cameraman is safe. Okay, so I'm going to get this string in position. I'm going to tighten this down so it doesn't come loose. we got to draw this forward. I have the winch disengaged. Bring the slider forward. Bring the bowstring into the trigger. Lock the trigger in place. It's holding. Re scared me. Re-engage the winch. Oh my Jesus, this is...
Should we just try from here? I'm a baby, we're gonna try from here. Look at it like... I just wanna get a good shot, you know? Oh my god. Load the arrow. Okay. Aim. I'm gonna... I'm gonna shoot. What happened was, I went to go pull the string, and it required more force, so when I yanked it, twisted my aim. We're gonna go for shot number two. Shot number two. Release the ratcheting system. Bring the slider, Ooh, get some slack. Bring the slider forward. I know WD-40 isn't a lubricant technically, but I'm going to put some on there in attempts to ease my release. Hope it doesn't make it too lubricated that it won't even lock. Um, okay. In position. Get that. Also, the first time you shoot ballistas, they lose a lot of power each shot because the strings are getting stretched. And then eventually they'll reach their stretching point. We're going back. Quite a bit further. Metal arrow this time. Oh my god. The arrow came flying in like that, so it wasn't a very good hit. We're gonna need some addressing on the release, but for a test fire, it's pretty good. We're gonna reset the bowstring, try to get some more power, and we're gonna hit this chain mail. We added a little power on them, reseated the bowstring, cut it a little bit deeper. Hopefully it stays on. We're gonna go for another shot. Um, my bowstring is a little too long, so it has a lot of slack at the maximum draw, but what can you do? I feel safer underneath it. Okay, one more click. Wood arrow again. I think that one shot a little straighter. I am going to aim to the right, because both arrows went to the right. Who knows why, but... Shooting at chainmail actually doesn't make much sense because the tip just gonna go through the points into the wood, but that thing devastated the wood. Sank completely in. Ooh, I know what we can do. 
It's not nearly as thick as actual armor. It's very thin, but it is steel. Try to hit that. Aim to the right side of my target. Oh my god. This release string needs a little tweaking. straight through. Cool. That's further back than we ever had it. Just needs a few tweaks, um, but it punched through this metal, put a hole in my door, and it had some pretty devastating effects to the plywood. The chain mail was blown to bits where the arrow connected. <coughs> so, pretty happy with the power. Uh, on the power, one of the reasons why these arrows really aren't having much effect they just hit this little wide blunt spot basically hitting them with a blunt projectile once it gets past the little sharp tip they're not well designed arrows um, the flight path was awful very hard to aim it could be because of my slider it could be because the arrows it could be just how this thing's twisted I don't know it takes some practice to aim but I don't know with how terrifying it was and the effect it had on our target, it's got power. We're gonna, next time we shoot, tighten the bowstring a little, dig the grooves a little deeper, and get past our fears and really get these things cranked up. There's a lot of power on it already, but we can get a lot more. Um, other than that, I don't know. Everything worked. Nothing broke. Nobody was hurt. The trigger was a little rough to release. Could work on that, but I don't know. It worked. What else do I say? Say goodbye to YouTube. Um, that's gonna do it. Oh wait, no. but yeah, that's gonna do it for your siege captain. Um, share the video. I don't really care about likes or comments, but I just want people to see this. I think this is cool. Share with your friends, families, your grandparents. They need something to do. They just sit around all day. Um, yeah, have a good day. Can you believe we ruined our chain mail? Yeah. Cool. Let's see how full this stuff is.